Hello internet, it is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. I know this video is late. If I didn't have to make those two cancel episodes today, this would have came out a lot sooner, but what am I going to do? <laughs> so, yeah, but today we're going to be talking about Haunted Mansion. So, as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons, so... Let's get to it. Pros. Mm. Okay, well, I can talk about the cast because the cast is quite good. We have a lot of notable names in here. Let's go through the list. Lakeith Lee Stanfield. I've seen him in some stuff recently. Let's see. Yeah, see Knives Out, Uncut Gems. So... Yeah, but he is, oh, he was in the, oh, he was in Get Out. He was, like, the dude who basically, well, like, uh, Daniel Kaluuya's character know that basically something's not right here. So his character is kind of important in the grand scheme of things. I was in the Death Note movie, the movie that it's best we all forgot ever happened. <laughs> but, yeah, I say he's a recognizable face. Like a thief, Stanfield. Who else we got? Uh, Tiffany Haddish. There we go. She's been quite a lot of stuff the last decade. Ever since uh, Girls Trip. That was her breakout moment. Kind of like how uh, Bridesmaids was Melissa McCarthy's breakout moment. Same thing here. And after that, she was in a night school with Kevin Hart. That did pretty good. Nobody's Fool didn't do all that great. The Kitchen. Ugh. Like a Boss. No. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been going too great <laughs> since, but she is a recognizable face, so I'll, I'll just say that she's recognizable. That's pretty much how what I can say about everyone here, pretty much. You got uh, Owen Wilson. Wow, <laughs> if I'm gonna talk about Owen Wilson, I'm gonna bring up wow, I have to, <laughs> it's, it's a requirement. But Owen Wilson, man, he's been in a lot of stuff whole lot of stuff. Let's uh, see. There's Anaconda, Armageddon, The Haunting, I guess. Shanghai Noon, Shanghai Nights, Meet the Parents, Zoolander. Uh, there's Royal Ten Bombs, Starsky and Hutch, Meet the Fockers, Wedding Crashers is a huge one. Cars... Yumi and Dupree, Night at the Museum, it's a ton of stuff here. Marley and Me, Night at the Museum 2, Fantastic Mr. Fox, a movie that deserved so much better, and Marmaduke, a movie that deserved nothing at all. <laughs> um, let's see, Little Fockers, I guess, Cars 2, Grand Budapest, oh, Free Birds, gotta mention that, you know, the movies were, the movie where, the turkeys go back in time to stop the first Thanksgiving to get turkeys off the menu. The whole meme. Why that become a meme, I don't know. But it did. And you know everyone's going to use it once Thanksgiving rolls around again. So be prepared. Um, Nine Museum 3. Cars 3. Wonder. That's really it. <laughs> um, he's had quite a bit of flops on his uh resume particularly the last decade but overall i'd say he again recognizable face definitely what else we got uh dane devito an icon right here just like the, the best human here <laughs> peak human of uh dane devito he's i don't think i've ever talked about him have i no Oh, I ha I probably did, maybe, a long time ago. But I get to talk about it in detail now, and I'm so happy. <laughs> so, Dan DeVito, he's been lots of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. I guess, like, the first major thing I'd recognize him from is uh, Twins, I guess. I mean, I know there's, like, was it Jewel of the Nile, and Romance in the Stone, and Terms of Endearment, which I guess well, I'm pretty sure did well, but... I've never seen these movies, so I can't really say. But Batman Returns, Penguin, there it is. That that is a very notable one. 
where he was like this very messed up version of the penguin, this very gross version of the penguin who literally bites people's noses off. <laughs> yeah, the Tim Burton, those Tim Burton Batman movies were uh, different, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but yeah, there's Hercules, but he like voiced in Hercules, so it doesn't really count. Wait, wait, where's Matilda? <laughs> Why is Matilda not on here? He was in that. Matilda's an absolute classic. Where is it? It's not here. It's a crime. All right. All right it, it, so let's, let's move on. Let's see what else. Anything? Oh, go. Uh, Austin Powers and Gold Member. He was like in the parody of Austin Powers where he was like mini me. <laughs> so that was interesting. Uh, let's see. Big Fish, Be Cool, Deck the Halls. That is a movie I've watched way too much. I know it sucks. Objectively, it sucks. But I just, I, I don't know why I watch I guess because I watched it as a kid. So that, that nostalgia is the reason why I watch it. Because if I didn't watch it as a kid, I would never watch this movie ever. But you know, the movie's like kind of mean-spirited <laughs> in tone. I just watch it because... My brain's dumb, I guess. I don't know. Oh, the Lorax. Yes. <laughs> Where he voiced the Lorax. Oof. It's definitely a good, you know, choice to be the Lorax, so Yeah. That's a that's a f <laughs> that's a big one right there. Let's see uh Smallfoot. A movie I watched like a couple months back for reasons. I don't even remember why. I think I just did it just because it it's so just bleh. <laughs> But, yeah, there's that. Dumbo. Does anyone even remember the Dumbo 2019 movie? I don't think so. I think we all kind of forgot about it. Because <laughs> it wasn't very good. <laughs> it didn't do very well. So, yeah. And they got Jumanji The Next Level, where he... Well, The Rock uh basically played him or at least his character because in the Jumanji the most recent Jumanji movies the whole gimmick is that you have people in real life they play the game they get sucked into the game then they become an avatar and Dan DeVito's character just happened to have the avatar of The Rock so yeah <laughs> and uh Dan Glover had the uh uh the avatar of Kevin Hart so it works like that I thought it was pretty funny. And then really nothing important after that. And now we're here. Obviously, Danny V has also done um, uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Like all way too many seasons of that show. That show's been going on forever. <laughs> but yeah, Danny DeVito, is, plus he's a big subject for memes. He's, you know, one of the, I think from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, one of my favorite I haven't really watched the show, but I've seen clips. One of my favorite ones is when he's like on an interview. He's like, anyway, I started blasting that meme. I see that meme be used for like Marvel movies. How the heroes handle the villains. They just blast them. They don't even try to talk. They just kill them. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, Dane DeVito and then you know, Rosario Dawson. She's been in a lot of stuff, too. So, let's go through the list as fast as I can. Josie and the Pussy... Oh my god, that is... That's an obscure movie right there. <laughs> um, yeah, there's that. Let's see. Men in Black 2. The sequel we all should forget, with, thanks to the Neuralizer. If the Neuralizer was real, it would help us forget that Men in Black 2 happened. And by extension, Men in Black International. We can forget that too. Avengers of Pluto Nash. Ooh. <laughs> One of the biggest flops in history. A movie that cost a hundred million dollars and made seven million. <laughs> Damn. Okay. What else do we have? The rundown. Alexander. It's not going too good. Sin City. That was a hit. Uh, let's see. Rent. I don't think that was a hit. Devil's Rejects. Maybe. Clerks too. I sure. Grindhouse. Was she in Grind? I I don't think she was. I don't remember her being in Grindhouse. What was was she in Death Proof? 
I don't think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, Grindhouse wasn't a hit, but you know, it has now has a cult following. What else we have? Eagle Eye, Seven Pound. Most of these are just like supporting roles, so it's not like super important. Let's say it was what else? Oh, the Percy Jackson movie. Ugh, let's move on from that. <laughs> this unstoppable zookeeper at the f what well, she was in zoop what like i haven't seen zoop keeper in 10 years because i don't want to watch it ever again but i don't remember her being in that movie at all maybe she was like a voice or something i don't remember what else we got sin city dame to kill for which was a total bust top five which did all right ratchet and clank jesus christ <laughs> i don't remember this one bit <laughs> but that movie was a total bomb. Uh, she also voiced in the Lego Batman movie as a Batgirl, so there's that. Unforgettable was anything but unforgettable. It was a total forgettable movie that most people forgot about. Because why would they want to remember that? <laughs> there's uh, what else we got? Uh, Zombieland Double Tap. I a movie that I probably should watch, but I just never did. So I can't really comment on that. And then there's, now we're here at Haunted Mansion. And I know she plays Ahsoka in live-action Star Wars. So, well, it's the live-action Star Wars show. So, yeah. So, I say she's a recognizable face, too. Who else we got? Uh, who is Dan Levy? Who is that? Okay, well, we don't have a lot to go off of here. It's probably been, like, TV or something, I would imagine. But... Yeah, no. Jamie Lee Curtis, legend right here. She's been in a lot of stuff. Won an Oscar last year for everything, ever, all at once. Not to mention, you know, the recent Halloween movies. You know, uh, Knives Out. Let's see. You again? No. <laughs> Beverly Hills Chihuahua. She was in that? Really? A Freaky Friday is that. That's a huge one for her. Christmas with the Krangs, nobody likes that movie, but they'll watch it on Christmas just because. Just like how I am with Deck the Halls. Yeah, it's kind of a problem. Uh, Halloween H2O, let's see. True Lies. Yeah, it's mainly like the, in the Halloween, the original. I guess Prom Night 2 and The Fog. Yeah, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis was a, a, a scream queen, if you will. So she's definitely a horror icon. So it kind of makes sense she's in a movie like this. And then uh, who else we got? Oh, Jared Leto. Okay. This is a interesting man, to say the least. Um, he's been in a lot of stuff. You know, Fight Club, American Psycho, both supporting roles. Requiem for a Dream, that was a main role. Uh... Alexander, he, yeah, he was in that. Uh, Panic Room, then Joker, the worst version of Joker we've ever gotten in live action form. Um, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, Little Things, House of Gucci, Morbius, classic. <laughs> yeah, Morbius. Oof. And there's nothing more to really say, but yeah, Jared Leto is Jared Leto. He's a weird dude. But everyone here, I wouldn't say their track records are very good, but they all are recognizable. And, and having them all together makes for a much more appealing package. So I'd say all of them, they're, you know, people know them, and you put them all together, it's appealing. So I'll label that as a pro. Um, Another pro is. Is there another... Pro I mean, I guess this is, like, the main movie of the weekend. I mean, all we have left is, like, uh, Talk To Me. I don't expect that to be a major hit. At least this has, like, a big studio you know, backing it up. Um. So I guess that's a positive... That's a very minor positive. Uh. Can you tell I'm struggling here? <laughs> I think you can. Uh. I think that's it. That's all I can come up with. Okay, cons. This is going to be so much easier. Okay. Reviews for this movie are... um. 
less than ideal, <laughs> to say the least. Last I checked, its Ron Tomato score was a 40%. It's 42 now. Okay. 42%, which is not great. Grant, we've seen worse this year, but still not great. Audience score is at 84%, which is kind of concerning, a little bit concerning for a movie like this. You think it would have like a higher score than that. But the cinema score... I think is kind of a red flag because its cinema score was is a B plus, which is definitely below average for a movie that's aimed towards families, even though it's PG thirteen. I didn't even know this was PG thirteen. It's like super late. <laughs> like I was kind of shocked. I thought for sure this would be a PG movie, but nope. So it's right here, PG PG thirteen. So strange, but yeah. So, critic score, audience score, cinema score, they're not exactly where they should be, so I'm labeling that as a con. Another con is uh, competition. This movie is opening a week after uh, Barbenheimer, you know, Barbie and Oppenheimer. Those two movies are dominating, particularly Barbie. That the, Barbie is, Barbie literally, every day of the week it's made over $20 million every single day. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All 20 million plus days. That's crazy. And Oppenheimer is like, you know, double digits every single day. So both of these, those movies are cleaning up. They are just, they have a stranglehold on the market right now. So you got to deal with that uh, beast. <laughs> And then not to mention, like, next Wednesday, you have Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, which is also kind of ge is geared more towards the family audience. But I feel like that is going to hurt this movie more than Barbie, Barbenheimer, real, mainly Barbie. But yeah, N Mutant Mayhem, I think, is going to do a lot more damage because, like, if you were to go up to, like, a kid and then you would ask them, okay, which one would you rather see, Haunted Mansion or Mutant Mayhem? They're probably going to pick mutant mayhem because it looks a lot more interesting <laughs> visually and just quality wise it just looks a lot better <laughs> personally I, that's what i think would happen so yeah so you gotta deal with this movie has to deal with barbenheimer <laughs> and it has to deal with uh, ninja turtles next week so that's two pieces two um really i guess three technically is barbenheimer's two movies but yeah, there's like three movies this movie has to deal with, and I don't think it's gonna succeed. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna successfully, you know, beat them. So yeah, I'm labeling those as a con. Another con is like the marketing campaign has been really weak, to say the least. For a movie that costs this much, the marketing campaign has been kind of pathetic. <laughs> like, and like I know this. Because, well, I've barely seen, like, ads for this. They're not really pushing this very hard. And, I mean, I know this is supposed to have, like, a... It was originally supposed to have, like, a Disneyland, like, big old premiere there. But because of the actor strike, they couldn't do it. So, that got scrapped. Um, But, like, I watched the trailer. Like, before, I, I watched the trailer for the first time, like, in front of Barbie and Oppenheimer. I watched it in front of both of them because the trailer played in front of both. It was the first time I've ever seen the trailer because I never seen it before then because I just didn't care about the movie enough <laughs> to watch the trailer. And both times I watched the trailer, I was severely underwhelmed. I was looking at it and I'm just like, how do you, how does this movie have so much talent yet is so damn lifeless <laughs> and boring and just a waste of time? It's crazy to me. It's. Ugh. <laughs> so yeah, the trailer kind of just, you know, it, it, it put a bad taste in my mouth, to say the least. And yeah, so the marketing campaign's been very weak, very lackluster. It's given no one, it's given no one a reason to watch the movie. So yeah, so lackluster marketing campaign, I'm labeling that as a con. Uh, Trying to think of some other cons. Oh, 
the last Haunted Mansion movie, which came out 20 years ago. Let's talk about that, shall we? So, the Haunted Mansion. So, yeah, this is not Disney's first rodeo of the Haunted Mansion. You have the 2003 movie, which starred Eddie Murphy. And, you know, this came out 03, Thanksgiving 03. You know, some people have complained, like, oh, this new Haunted Mansion movie, why is it opening in July? It would have worked better in October or September, like, close to the spooky month. And, yeah, I agree, but I I give Haunted Mansion's date a, date a pass because not only have, like, horror movies or, like, horror-esque movies have played outside of the horror season. Hell, Monster House from 2006, that opened in July, and that was very much a horror-themed kids movie. So, and the uh, Coraline opened in February, and that's a horror-themed kids movie. So not all horror-themed kids movies need to open in October. It's not a requirement. But I feel like Thanksgiving is a much worse date than July because when i think of thanksgiving and the holidays i don't think of scary shit except maybe dealing with black friday crowds but that's really about it i don't really think of scary stuff so having this release on thanksgiving feels really strange very strange so that's one point haunted mansion 2023 has over the eddie murphy version has a better release date but, yeah, the original Haunted Mansion, it didn't do very well. Up with, like, $24 million, made, like, $75 million, $155 million on a budget of, like, $90 million. That's not ideal at all. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, apparently this, this version has a cult following now, from what I've read. I don't really see, like, the evidence of that. <laughs> but, granted, I haven't seen this movie in so long. Maybe... If I watch it now, like on Disney Plus, maybe I'll like it more. I don't know. But yeah, this movie was kind of a bust. So you kind of understand why it took him 20 years to make another one. And I feel like history is about to repeat itself. Because Haunted Mansion 2023 is it's also not looking too good. So yeah, so this movie has to deal with the uh, not so great reputation of its predecessor. Or the you know the last haunted mansion movie, so I'm labeling that as a con. You know, dealing with that thing. Um, I oh yeah, Disney. That's a big con right now. Disney. It feels like it's like they're on like this type of curse or something. I don't know how to explain it. But 2023 has not been a very good year for Disney, like at all. With the lone exception of Guardians three, every single movie they've made has been a they've released has been a bust financially ant-man 3 little mermaid elemental indiana jones tile of destiny all lost money <laughs> all none of which are successful in the slightest indiana jones easily being the biggest bomb of them all so yeah dealing with that that's that's not good <laughs> at all and i feel like this is gonna fit right in it's gonna get thrown right into the bomb territory <laughs> so i don't know if what disney like it's crazy like five years ago like in the really yeah no four years ago in 2019 they were dominating like really dominating like everything and now four years later the polar opposite has happened so i don't know if it's a curse i don't know if it's karma i don't know if it's both <laughs> but yeah 2023 is anything but disney's year so I'm labeling Disney as a con. <laughs> um, and I think that's it. So opening weekend. Oh, wait, it's Thursday preview numbers. I forgot. So I should talk about that. Um, it's preview numbers 3.1. That's not great <laughs> in, the, in the grand scheme of things. But I mean, to be fair, it is better than... Um, elemental and i'll show you elemental which was a big old bomb last month uh that had a thursday preview of 2.4 million so that's a minor positive <laughs> um and then let's see it was jungle cruise right yes jungle cruise which was like 
I believe the last uh, Disney attraction to be made into a movie that had a Thursday night number of two point seven million. But granted, it's hard to compare this, you know, Haunted Mansion to this because Jungle Cruise had to deal with a much worse marketplace, had to deal with COVID, had to deal with Disney Plus Premier Access where it was on Disney Plus for thirty dollars. I deal with a lot of that, so it's really it's apples and origin and oranges when it comes to Jungle Cruise and Haunted Mansion. But it's something. I mean, it came out the same weekend as this, you know, the Haunted Mansion. So it's kind of a good comparison, but it's not. I don't know. But um, yeah, that opened with a uh, thirty-five million. Like this movie, like Haunted Mansion, would kill for an opening of thirty million. So, yeah, it's Thursday preview numbers. They're not as bad as other movies, but they're still not very good. So, I'm labeling that as a con. And I think that's it. Now, yeah, I know that's it. So, opening weekend. Mm. I was thinking 30 million, but that I don't think it's likely anymore. I think it's going to hit the 20s. I mean, as already, uh, Haunted Mansion, the original, opened with like 24 million. I think 2023's Haunted Mansion is going to hit the same level. I'm going to say 25 million. That's what I'm going to go with. You know what? 25 to 30 million. I think that's a decent enough range. 25 to 30 million total. Ooh. 70 million plus. Maybe. I don't know. But even if it hits that, the movie's a total bomb and a half. Like, it's it's going down in flames, man. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's so that's Haunted Mansion. Now we got one more movie to talk about, and that movie is Talk To Me. And then I'll be it for July. So, yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. Well, check out more videos like this. I got playlists on the homepage, all previous uh, prediction videos I made this year. You want to watch any of the past prediction videos I made the past this year, the past few years, go right ahead. There's also the, ca the Cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I talked about Haunted Mansion three times. The first time was episode 110. I talked about it alongside Renfield and Father Stu. I mean, even in the description, you know, I put like, yep, Disney is trying again with this. <laughs> I should really tell you my feelings on the movie and its existence. All right, so that's the first time. Second time was episode 154. I talked about it alongside um, Snow White, you know, the movie everyone's been roasting for like the past week. Uh, Mufasa, The Lion King. And Rogue Squadron, a movie that's pretty much been killed at this point. So that was the second time. And the third time was um, uh, episode 178, where I talked about it alongside the Marvels. And the thing is, the Marvels was supposed to come out this weekend, but then I got delayed to November. And then Haunted Mansion took its place. So that's why Haunted Mansion is coming out this weekend. So fun fact. And I also talked about it alongside my big fat Greek wedding three. So, yeah. So, I talked about it those three times. So, if you want to watch those episodes, any other ones I've done recently. I've, I did two, like, technically today. Or yesterday. I don't remember. Recent, very recently. I'm now up to 200 episodes. So, I just did 199 and 200. So, if you want to watch those any of the ones I've done on the channel, you want to binge them all from beginning to now, I highly encourage you to do that, so go do it. There's also the re box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. July recap will come out after the first, around the first week of August, after Meg 2 comes out. <laughs> Tell you that. July is going to be a very interesting month to talk about, lots of positives. But Haunted Mansion will definitely not be one of those positives. I can tell you that. So, yeah, but stay tuned for that video. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos, I'm in the channel. You can go right ahead. And, yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.